uh, Dr. Valerie Steele from Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City, and we are now viewing the, uh, I guess, the preview of the Japan Now Fashion Show. Dr. Steele, welcome. Thank you. And uh, how long did it took for you to assemble this particular exhibit? I've been working on Japan Fashion Now for the past two years, mm -hmm. so I made a couple of trips to Japan. And we, of course, have been actually collecting Japanese fashion for more than two years because mm -hmm. it's so important for avant-garde fashion. Mm -hmm. But now working on the show, we also started collecting street and subcultural fashion. Mm -hmm. And we've been reaching out to a very wide range of designers to make sure that we have good examples on display, things by young designers and new brands that people may not have heard of, but who we think are important. Mm -hmm. And I've seen uh, the 1980s blossoming uh, with Miyake, Yamamoto, Comme des Garçons, and um, basically I guess the, they gave birth to the cut so asymmetrical movement. Yes. And I would like to, um, what were your thoughts when you first saw that scene? Well I was, to I was totally into Japanese fashion in the mm -hmm. 80s, mm -hmm. so I was wearing a lot of Yoji then and some Comme des Garçons as well. Mm -hmm. And even fashion people back in the 80s thought it was really freaky. Mm -hmm. It's all been assimilated now. Everybody wears black, everybody wears asymmetry to have destroyed and sort of rough edges on clothes. That We take that as something completely normal. Mm -hmm. But back then it was really radically different. People thought it was kind of insane and unreadable clothes. Mm -hmm. So, for fashion historians, it's as though that was a real breaking moment in fashion history. Some have talked about how Japanese fashion in the 80s ended the hundred years of fashion that ran from Charles Frederick Worth through Yves Saint Laurent and made a, a radical break where there's a completely new attitude towards fashion, towards the relationship between body and clothes. And um, with the destroy element, the deconstruction and reconstruction, a kind of self-referentiality that you started looking into how do you make clothes? How do you take them apart? What does is, what is clothing mean? Mm -hmm. And within the past 25 years, from your personal perspective, how has Japan evolved from being the avant-garde, whole couture, um, very, you know, anti-establishment to I'm seeing all the street fashion that's permeating not just in Japan but around the world. Well, um, avant-garde fashion was always only a minority style in mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that in the 80s you saw millions of black clad pedestrians. You mostly saw people wearing Brooks Brothers suits or, you know, mm -hmm. Chanel suits. But what you you see in the 80s is the rise of a sort of radical new avant-garde fashion culture. Mm -hmm. And then in the 90s you start to see the real proliferation of street style in Japan. Mm -hmm. And now I think now in the 21st century you're seeing really interesting sort of interpenetration and connections between the two, between avant-garde fashion, new designers, and street style. Mm -hmm. I would like to um uh, take you to like uh, several pieces sure. uh, if you could talk about them if sure. you don't mind. Okay, so we're looking at I guess the Yankee bikers? I guess well these are really rare and controversial and fascinating clothes that were worn by Japanese bikers and kind of low riders, so the low riding cars mm -hmm. in the 1980s and early 90s. And I met a photographer who's had done books taking photographs of the bikers. And so really? he was able to borrow the clothes for the exhibition. Oh. So I think these are the first time that these clothes have ever been on exhibit in any museum. Uh, they wouldn't sell them. They're still very much cherished, even though everybody who had them is now too old to be a biker anymore. Hmm. So you can see from the pictures, they're girls as well as guys wearing them. The outfits are kind of unisex. The outfits draw on lots of working class um, Japanese uniform, mm -hmm. sort of construction worker type uniforms, uh, as well as having very elaborate embroidery, some nationalist symbols which made it quite controversial in Japan, mm -hmm. sort of like the punks. I mean, this is very much a transgressive uh, youth style, very much seen as a delinquent style, mm -hmm. and also known as sort of Yankee style and the idea that Americans were also kind of um, often crude and disruptive. Oh, really? <laughs> and um, I saw that movie, uh, Kamikaze Girls, and one of the main characters was a Yankee biker. And all these embroidery, were they all hand done? Or did they buy them uh, 
you know, pre-embroidered by machinery or pre-fabricated? I'm sure that this is all machine embroidery. Uh -huh. um, but obviously, when, whenever you have a subcultural style that develops, very soon there are entrepreneurs who are catering to that mm -hmm. style tribe. Mm -hmm. So very few things are entirely do-it-yourself. These are mm -hmm. all companies which were accommodating wow. the biker clientele. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Steele, I have a question to ask you. Why is it that we have your standard Japanese school uniforms here in this exhibit? Because the Japanese school uniforms are such an important component of the whole Japanese fashion scene. Mm -hmm. if, you, if I want, want to drop you down the middle of Tokyo, you would see a lot of school uniforms. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of Japanese fashion history, this is a culture w in which uniforms and uniformity play a very important role. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, things like this classic sailor uniform or the mm -hmm. high collar boys school uniform are very iconic elements in Japanese pop culture. Mm -hmm. So there are movies about, you know, sort of school girls and their sailor outfits. Mm -hmm. And, and um, even some of the bikers used to wear parts of their high school uniforms as mm -hmm. part of the sort of biker ensemble. Mm -hmm. These are very important element in Japanese youth and popular culture. Even the new sort of blazer uniform, which is less interesting in and of itself, more international, played a role in the girl style in the 90s when girls would wear it as girls are wont to wear school uniforms in a disruptive way with, you know, the knee socks all rolled down and the skirts hang yanked up. So it was not done in the appropriate way, but in a transgressive way. Okay.